doing live fish mount today. This is step one of the many steps it takes to actually get one of these done. So it doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, but it does take a little bit of attention to detail. And step one is take pictures of your fish. Make sure that you have a really good detailed map of how you're gonna paint it when you get to the final stage. Uh, so the best thing you can do is start by laying your fish out. So lay your fish out on all four sides, believe it or not. You want to show a picture of the bottom make sure you have some pretty good lighting if it has any distinctive marks you want to take good detailed pictures of those uh, redfish obviously have a spot so i want to try to mimic that spot as well as i can when it comes down to actually painting that on so in order to do that i need to get a realistic sized picture of that spot This one actually has a spot right here in the tail, which, believe it or not, believe it or not, I had not noticed till now before. So that's important that you spread out these fins. Even if you, you're the one that caught it, you're gonna wanna capture all of those details. All right, so let's talk about some of the tools that actually are necessary for cutting up a fish. Now these redfish are scaly fish. They have large scales. So you're going to want to cut through those scales with something that's durable enough to cut that heavy scale. If it were like a freshwater trout, you could do it with a basic pair of paper scissors. Um, in this case, we're going to be using these. These are actually just a, a wire cutter, sheet metal cutter, and it's going to help cut through those scales without ripping the scales out of the flesh itself, out of the uh, you call it the hide so so basically here's what's involved if you want your fish to be visible on its right side what you want to do is make your incision on the left side I know for a lot of people that's obvious but I just want to make it very clear the incision that you put on the side of the fish will be left behind and that's going to be on the wall side so that's going to be on your wall in your home or your office and you're going to have that against the wall where no one's going to see it now depending on where you're going to mount this so we're going to have this fish in this case i like this spot i want to try to emphasize that later this spot here so i want this side to be visible um, the other fish that we did is pointing to the left i want this one to be pointing to the right so the head to the right. In this situation, we're gonna cut it on the left side of the body. What you wanna do is make a small incision here, and we'll go over that in detail. Make a small incision here, cut along the center line of the body, all the way up until you get to the gill plate. Now cut that through, and then what we got here is a couple basic tools. This is a flasher. Uh, you can get these on Amazon for I think about 13 bucks. And you don't need to get the fancy one that's $20, $30. Just get the $8 model. It works perfect. If you have a pair of uh, cutters like this, it's helpful when you have heavy scaled fish. And also what I thought was going to be beneficial is I bought this set. Um, this is a surgical set for pre-med students. I got this on Amazon. I would think it was about $17. Has roughly 20-something tools in it. The one thing that I think is great about this set, it has two scalpels. Uh, scalpels aren't necessary. It sounds a little bit too in-depth for some people, but if you're doing those real fine cuts around the gill plate and trying to get all the meat and tissue out of those areas in there, it's nice to have that. This fleshing tool is not going to do the job. That's not going to get you up into the head and then into the eye sockets to remove all that material. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the camera. We're going to get going. We're going to make our first incisions. We'll show you that in real time, and then we're gonna speed it up so that you guys don't have to watch the entire process, but you'll see what we're up to. All right, so here we go. We're gonna make our first incision. You're gonna knock out a couple scales. Remember, this is the side of the fish you don't care about. You just wanna keep it manageable so that whatever you break on this side is going to be hidden later on. So that's it, just a small incision on this side.
There we go. We're just going to go right up to the gill plate. Right up under there. Again, there's cartilage and bone there, so that's going to stop the scissors, but that's far enough for now. Now, what we want to do is you want to flesh out your fish. After we make that incision, you can see the flesh, the meat of the fish. Um, and then you'll see where the scales attach to basically the hide. And what we're going to do is separate that meat from that hide. So we're going to come in. I'm going to use my scalpel to get it started. Um, then I'll probably change over to another tool, something that might be a little easier. But I just want to make little nicks in that flesh. And we're not trying to get all of the consumable meat off of there. We're just trying to get it started so we can get our finger in there and get it uh, begun. I do want to mention this fish was frozen uh, after it was caught we just took it whole body threw it in the freezer and you can keep them for about six months what you want to do is just wrap it in a towel or put it in a plastic bag wrap it up tight keep the air out and then just toss it in the freezer whole don't you know don't try cleaning it out or anything like that of what we're going to do to this fish um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out everything in there is out and we're going to take it into the kitchen give it one last final rinse before we put it in our solution to dry out the flesh and get rid of anything that might be a living organism okay so here's what we're going to do uh, I have a bucket here, five gallon pail. If you want to do is use denatured alcohol. I can order this on Amazon. I think this is about $34 for a gallon. So it's going to be a one to one ratio. You're going to put a gallon of denatured alcohol for each gallon of water. So gallon of water, gallon of the alcohol, put it in the bucket. What you want to do is make sure that you can completely submerge your fish. Um, I decided to get um, a black bucket because I don't want people seeing floating organisms around in my garage. Um, these lids are screw on lids. They have a gasket on them. You want to do is make sure you have a gasket. Denatured alcohol is going to evaporate. So if you put it in there and you just put a snap on lid that does not have a gasket, it's going to evaporate and it's going to rot your fish. Make sure you have a gasket on your bucket and this is reusable you can just keep adding to it just make sure that you're doing that one to one ratio uh, we're going to put the fish into the alcohol completely submerge it lay it right on its side make sure you move it around a little bit that way there if there's any air bubbles inside the, the uh, fish that they're going to pop up or they're going to surface you don't want to have anything uh, trapping air in there. So I move him around a little bit, get the, all that air out. He's going to sink. So uh, once you get him into the bucket, he's going to sit in this bucket for about 
Well, I'm gonna let them go for two weeks because there's a little bit of extra tissue in certain areas. I didn't find to be worth trying to get that material off. I'm gonna let the alcohol do the job and make sure that preserves that material. Um, when we're done, we are going to take them out. You wanna make sure you always keep that fish wet. Never allow your fish to become dry. You're gonna ruin the hide and it's not gonna be manageable to actually get finished up. Uh, keep it away from your pets and animals and things like that. You don't want them going in there, uh, especially keep it, it is flammable, keep it away from anything that actually could cause a fire. Uh, don't put it next to your furnace and things like that or anything that you're gonna create a uh, flame with or a spark. So that's gonna be that and we'll see you next time and we will start the process of putting the foam inside the mount and getting it stitched up and uh, sat. Okay, take care. <laughs> right there? Yeah. Okay, you just catch me from like here. No, like from here down. Like to here down, right here. It's good so far. Yeah, it's all shadow. Sean shadow over there. Come in tighter. I can see the. Yeah. No, that's fine. Right there is probably good. That's creepy. It is. Yeah. Back out. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, today we're gonna be doing a live fish mount. This is step one of. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Stay on me until we're gonna until we do the whole. You thing. look down at the fish. Okay, maybe I gotta stop looking now. All right. Ready? And. Mr. Redfish, you're the one.